Good morning, everyone. We are live, hopefully, um, on Facebook with Water Tiger School of Tai Chi Chuan. Um, in this time of being home alone together, um, for, of course, our, our friends, our patrons, our students uh, from our suspended, canceled, whatever you want to call it, program at Sachem Public Library in Holbrook on the Isle of Length in the state of New York. Um, and of course, since we're on Facebook and we're live, the greater community as well, just trying to bring a little bit of normalcy to um, these trying times in which we find ourselves. So forgive me, I didn't hit the airplane mode on my phone before I went live, so I'll get that taken care of. And there we go. Good morning, Colette. Um, so here we are in week 5,384,982 of our um, home isolation. Not really. I think it's like, what, week 19 or something like that? I can't remember. I know we put it in the, uh, the comment section of our description of today. Da -da 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 -da. Where's it at? All right, there. No, week 19. So we had a week off. We um, did not do a live broadcast for Sachem on Memorial Day. We do have, I'll announce now, and hopefully I will remember at the end of this morning session, we have a week off this month as well. We'll be here next Monday live. Um, but the Monday after that, let's see, 15th, it would be the 17th. Uh, we're going to go dark, um, going dark for a week for a personal vacation. So there won't be very much except our daily posts on, on our um, Facebook page uh, during that week. And then we'll be back, uh, if that was the 17th, the 24th, um, to finish out the month. Uh, we'll also be taking Labor Day off as well. Uh, so there's that, just FYI. Uh, so today, what we're going to do is uh, change gears. We've been focusing last four weeks all on Tai Chi walking exercises and variations in Tai Chi forms. We're going to go back to some Qigong, but it's going to be moving Qigong, so we're still going to be walking. Um, we have, I believe this is our last animal in the five animal frolics that we've presented since late March. Um, this is the deer frolics. Um, so as we've talked about, I believe uh, as we presented the frolics, um, a lot of different versions of the frolics have a lot of different animals. Um, you know, ours are um, crane, monkey, tiger, bear, and deer. Um, some have some of those same. Some will have phoenix. Some will have dragon. Some serpent, uh, panther. Let's see what else have I seen. I've seen a lot of different ones and uh, different versions of the movements as well. So like everything that we do there are variations and but we are going to stay with one thing consistent and that's whenever we do the animal frolics in this environment and generally whenever i present the animal frolics either um, in the studio program or um, when we've done it um, at public events um, for a warm-up we do a little piece from the nine temple exercises called advance and retreat because i really want people to focus on the alignment of their knees to their little toesies. Can't see my toesies, but you can see my knees. Um, because it's very important for knee health. Um, and I, you know, one of the, I feel, you know, one of the added benefits of advance and retreat is it really puts the, minds in the mind into the knees. So you, you can keep your knees the direction of the toes. Um, so there's that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Of course, the studio is still remote. There's no news from the governor's office on when um, you know, gyms and recreational facilities might reopen. Um, and as I've said in the past, yes, I am a little frustrated by that, but I also understand that. I mean, look at the COVID numbers across the country. Um, and there is a reason that New York is where it is. Um, and our, um, shall we say, our very slow and purposeful reopening is one of the reasons that our numbers in New York State um, are where they are. Uh, so anyway, so there's that. Um, before we set up for um, advanced and retreat, I just want to talk about the health benefits of advanced and retreat. So it helps to open up the front and the back of the lower abdominal area. Uh, it can uh, connect in, you know, the areas of the lower field of elixir, the Shia Dantian and the gate and the Shen Yu, the essence stores or the, the esoteric kidney channel. Uh, it can, uh, they're, they're both, by the way, directly stimulated by it. They can um, it, it helps um, 
with health and functionality um, in the kidneys, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, the gallbladder, uh, the ascending, the traverse, and the descending colon. So it helps with digestive disorders and, and that sort of thing and things related to the digestive system. It can help strengthen the abdominals, the legs, and the ankles. Um, so there you go. Uh, and again, focused knees, toes. Uh, it also, I feel, helps us to explore Tai Chi wise. And now, as I often say, the nine temple exercises aren't necessarily considered Tai Chi exercises, but a lot of people who do Tai Chi programs uh, incorporate the nine temple exercises into their warm up regimen. Um, it's sort of more of an external, internal, Qigong based set of exercises. Uh, but anyway, uh, help us explore um, sort of what we might refer to as six directional force, but at least two directions. And you know how um, within the principles we talk about something forward, something back, something up, something down, something left, something right. Uh, and this is sort of the something forward, something back, the two directions of the six directional force. Uh, and we can use advance and retreat to explore how when we are retreating, we are also advancing and how when we are advancing, we are also retreating. <sighs> Maybe too early on an early August morning uh, to throw that particular theory out there. I'm going to get a drink and we'll get started. And hopefully stay live. So I have to admit a little bit of, um, I don't know what it was. It wasn't Freuden or what, what I can't remember that word. Um, I wasn't enjoying the fact that somebody else's live session uh, went out on them last week, but I did appreciate the fact that I'm not the only one that has issues with, you know, Facebook Live dropping out. Uh, and this was uh, Tony Horton from Tony Horton Fitness and Tony Horton Life. His um, He does a weekly thing, plyo workout, sort of really a mixed uh, kind of workout, not all strictly plyometrics. Um, but anyway, about 50 minutes into his live se session, it just stopped. <clears throat> so anyway, I thought that was a good sign that I'm not alone. So in advance, let's start with a shake just because. In advance and retreat, we may have the feet shoulder wide. We may have them a little bit broader, but notice my toes are pointing toward you, right straight in front of me. I know between the camera and the angle of the device and that sort of thing, it may look like my toes are splayed, but they're not. They're pointed right directly out in front of me, the same direction as my center line. So my knees and my toes need to stay forward throughout. That becomes a little bit tough because what I'm gonna do is, you know, in this exercise, I'm gonna twist the torso. And we want to be careful when we twist the torso that we're really twisting mostly above the hips because watch this knee if you can as I see how it's bending in. If I'm turning my left hip back as I'm turning leftwards, my right knee is, is folding in. Knees aren't meant to move that direction. So I want to twist the torso, maybe a little bit of the hips until I feel the tug on my knee. And once I feel the tug on my knee, I'm done rotating my hips. And I turn my lower abdominals, then my upper abdominals, and sort of mid torso, wherever my spinal flexibility allows me to, and then my shoulders. And then finish it with my head. Now say I have a lot of vertebra fused together or held, held together in Harrington, with Harrington rods. Um, which I have had in the past, I don't right now, right? <clears throat> then I may not have much twist in my actual torso and have to really rely more on my head than the twist in my torso. But I still want to feel that activation. So even if I can't really twist that direction and I can't twist my shoulders, what I'm doing is imaging that internal wringing of the towel, if you will, that twist inside and feeling the twist in the muscles and the surrounding you know, flesh and bones and that sort of thing, but not really physically doing a twist. So you know, that remains the, the same regardless of if I'm advancing or if I'm retreating. And there are two distinct movements here, in advance and retreat. Um, and those two distinct, uh, distinct moments or movements are there's a shift and there's a turn. They are not done simultaneously. 
It's not turning and shifting at the same time, though there are exercises where people do that. This is not one of them. There is a very distinct shift and then a turn. And then a distinct shift and then a turn. And again, paying attention to those knees and toes pointing the same direction. Breath pattern, for the most part, I will leave to you. Though I do suggest a breath pattern and it changes between retreat and advance or advance and retreat. So there is that. There's also an image. And that image is, of course, if I am retreating, if I'm moving away from, say, you know, the left side of the room, then I am doing that. Something is expanding, filling that. I'm giving it room. It's expanding. I'm giving it space. Turning. Now something is expanding on this side. I'm giving it space. I am retreating. And advancing that thing, that energy field, that individual is compressing, is moving away from me. I'm filling the space left behind. So in retreating, I'm becoming yin to something's yang. In advancing, I'm becoming yang to something's yin. So there you go. Again, breathe when you have to, but I'll suggest a breath pattern as we get going. Um, but it's, up, it's entirely up to you. Just breathe, right? We're going to start with retreats. Probably do, I don't know. I'm feeling like 12 pairs of the two, but we might end up just doing six. It depends upon how I feel when we get started. Um, so we're going to turn... I'm going to start with the left. No, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to start going this way. So maybe you'll go to your left, right? So the direction that, to which we are turning, never mind. <laughs> this is not good. I'm, I'm this scattered this early in the morning. I'm just going to go left. So I'm just going to say left to right. So let's fill the left first, turn and look. So we're all on our left leg, regardless of what we may look like on our screen. Uh, well, what I look like on my screen. So my left leg is full. I'm looking to the left. I don't dictate what to do with the hands. Some people like to put them in a static position. They're not involved in the movement. They're not expanding. They're not compressing. I really just like to leave mine dangling. So maybe on an inhalation, I shift. I am retreating from that side. On an exhalation, on an exhalation I turn. And on an inhalation, I shift. But breathe when you have to. Turn. That's one pair. Shift. Turn, shift, two pair, turn, all the weights on the left leg, shift, filling the right, pushing away from the left, keeping the weight on the right, turn, shift, pushing on the right foot, filling the left, turn. I believe that's three, turn. Whoops, sorry, shift, turn, shift, turn, we're going to call that four, turn, shift, Five and five, yeah, we're going to 12. Turn, six, turn, six, knees and toes. Turn, feel that activation in that lower band. Seven and seven. Suddenly feeling kind of thirsty at 10 o'clock in the morning. Eight, eight, nine, Nine, song cue, 10, 10, 11, 11, last pair in retreats, 12, 12. Now I'm going to hold the weight in the left while I'm looking to the right side. So advancing is moving and looking in the same direction. Retreating is moving away from the direction you're looking. Toes are still forward, knees are still forward. Now I might reverse the breath pattern here. So I might now exhale as I am, as I am filling that leg, as I am advancing and inhale on the turn. So 12 more pair. I don't know why I just held up five. Shift and turn. 
maybe an exhalation and an inhale. That's one pair, counting down from 12. So here's 11, turn, and 11, turn. Here's 10, turn, and 10, turn, 9, turn, and 9. There's the song cue again, turn. Here's 8, turn, and 8, turn, about to get thirsty, 7, turn, and 7, turn, 6, turn, and 6. Again, if you want to breathe the way I'm breathing, it's an inhalation here, an exhalation here, eight, uh, sorry, 6, and 6, 5, and five, if my numbers are right. Notice, crypt, crown point of the head, base of the pelvic bowl, four and four. I'm not leaning either back or forward. I'm maintaining that pivot point, three, from the crown point of the head to the base of the pelvic bowl. And three, last four advances. One, two, three, and four, turn and face the front. So I cut down a little bit on my chatter on that during, I mentioned going into it about how it can help us recognize how we were advancing when we were retreating and retreating when we were advancing. And I talked about the image, but didn't really bring it into the actual exercise and that idea that when I'm retreating, something is filling and it's becoming young and I'm becoming yin. I'm giving it space, and when I'm advancing, it's becoming yin, it's compressing, it's moving back, I'm moving forward. And the thing with finding the advance in the retreat, we can find all sorts of places. When I turn, right, if I'm turning to the left, my left shoulder is going backwards. My left shoulder is retreating, it's moving back, while my right shoulder is moving forward. As I push off, this leg is compressing, it's becoming yin, and yes, my right hip is moving farther away from where it started, but my leg, my right, left leg, is moving down and forward. So there's advancements in the expansion of the leg, even as part of me retreats. And as I'm advancing, now this leg is compressing as this leg expands, but once again, I still have the advance on this shoulder and the retreat on the other shoulder. And it's sort of, you know, micro, macro, boom. And you can find that in different parts of the body as well where you are moving really in two directions at once, even though you're doing one thing. So advance and retreat from the nine temple exercises, uh, sort of a standard for us when we do anything from the five animal frolics. So the frolic of the deer, the last of the five animals in the um, version of the five animal frolics uh, that we do at Water Tiger School. The deer frolics helps to improve liver function it can also address mental and emotional challenges. Uh, it helps to strengthen the bones and the tendons, uh, as well as increase circulation, and helps to reduce the stagnation and the weakness that comes with older age. So there are a lot of nice therapeutic qualities to the deer. And by the way, I always, in all five animals, I throw in can help address issues with arthritis in all of the five animals. Um, but that's sort of it. You know, the top one is it helps improve liver function, uh, but can also uh, help with um, emotional and, and, uh, and mental challenges. So it sort of has that in common with, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with the crane. It has other things in common with the crane as well, and we'll get to that uh, as, we, uh, as we continue on. So, so there you go, that, that's the therapeutic qualities. You know, each of the five animals sort of have this list of stuff. One is the therapeutic qualities. There's also, when we do the five animal frolics, what we want to connect with is the animal. We want to be the animal. We don't want to be a human being an animal. So, you know, my usual take on that is the Stanislavski version of the animal frolics. Stanislavski was an acting trainer, and his point of view um, for being an actor was you always ask yourself, um, I think it was the magic if. If I were the character in these given circumstances, what would I do? 
So that still, to me, separates you from the character. So it's not, what would I do if I were a deer? Though that can sometimes help us. Uh, it is, I am the deer. And to help us connect with the animal, we seek to embrace the nature and the spirit of each animal. And the deer's nature is a calm alertness. So being calm and alert. And that sort of goes against how we normally think in the West about deer. We think timidity. And there's nothing timid about the deer. It's calm and alert. Um, so that is the nature of the deer. The spirit of the deer is supple, without limits. Uh, and I actually use a, a sort of a physical image to uh, exemplify that. And that's that idea that, you know, if you see a, a deer next to a fence, like the deer is just standing there. And it won't seem like they have done anything to prepare, but suddenly they're on the other side. They just sleep without hardly any activation, without any hardly any tension whatsoever. So the nature of the deer, calm and alert. The spirit of the deer, supple, without limits. The physical attributes of the deer, the way in which we move is the deer, is everything should feel like a constant stretching with a soft, natural, supple uh, torso. So we don't want, not a lot of tension. Um, so there is that. There's one other thing about the, the physicality of the deer, if you will, and that's the hands, the really expressed in the hands. And it's one of the chi focus. Uh, one of the foci for the chi, for the chi is the hands. Now we've had, you know, tiger claws. Oops, that's a little bit much. Tiger claws. We've had the bear paws. The deer, the hands and the fingers, represent the antlers. And I, I want to point out here, I'm down on my knees, right, that they're going to be up by the temples, but by no means are we doing anything like this. Right? But the hands will rise to about temple height and in front. And the fingers, and sort of notice, they're not really with me symmetrical. They're not all in the same position. So that's the idea of the hands being the antlers of the deer. And deer walking is very you know, kind of not very complex in, in how the hands relate. And they're relaxed when they're down. They're in the antler position when they're up. So there's that. Here's the other aspect where the deer is like the crane, and it's the breath. Breath is a soft inhalation in through the nose, and the exhalation through pursed lips, like you're about to kiss somebody, with the sound, I don't know if you can hear that, of the wind. A nice gentle breeze, not the kind of wind that we're going to have in the next 24 hours on the Isle of Length with Isaias. I think I got that right. Uh, but anyway, so that's the breath. The chi focus will be a little complex and take a little bit of explaining because it involves the do and the ren mei, the yin conception vessel and the yang governing vessel. Uh, it's small circulation in, in practice of Qigong, traditional Chinese medicine and Tai Chi. And like all things, opinions vary. Most will agree that it begins, the yin conception vessel begins, uh, uh, you know, on, sort of under the tongue, if you will, in the mouth, and runs down the center line in front of the body. It's the end point where we get into issues. And it's also the end point in the young govern, governing vessel uh, that can cause some issues. Some people will stop it, well, in other places as well. But many people stop it at the Hu Yin, the bottom of the sea, the perineum, the base of the pelvic bowl. Other folks will stop it at the Ming Men, which we place in equivalent position to the Shia Dan Tian uh, on the front. And again, there are people who disagree with that. Where we place it is sort of between, if you will, the Ming Men point, the gate of life, and sort of the anal cleft region in, um, around the glutes. So at that first split in the glutes. So we're kind of lower back, not halfway, closer to the anal cleft than the Ming Men, but right about there. And that's the point for us in our lineage 
where the yin conception vessel ends and the yang governing vessel begins. And from that point, below the Ming Men, above the cheeks, it comes up the center line of the spine, up over the top of the skull. Some people, too, will stop the young governing vessel at the Bach way, at the 100 convergences at the crown point of the head. So you have that split of the body. Most, however, bring it down the front of the skull and a roof of the mouth. Now, obviously, the bottom of the mouth and the roof of the mouth are not connected. So that's one of the reasons, kind of the more esoteric reason, that we want the tip of the tongue touching the roof of the mouth. Now again, that acupuncture point for some are, is on, located on the soft palate, which is toward the back of the roof of the mouth. Not a lot of these talk of the tongue on the heart palate either. But that's where we put it. If you didn't understand that, not a lot of ability to talk with the tongue on the heart palate either. Our point, our, where we place that acupuncture point, is just behind the upper teeth on the hard palate. Because that way, the tongue is relaxed and floats up. You know, and I will always mention, one, you know, opinions vary. Some people are very exact with where the acupuncture points are. But I've, I've actually heard now from more than one acupuncturist, you know, through other people as well as myself, um, that, you know, sometimes they'll ask a client where an acupuncture point is because where the client believes the acupuncture point is is where the acupuncture point is. So we have some wiggle room. So anyway, tip of the tongue lightly touching the roof of the mouth. So you have the yin conception vessel from the bottom of the mouth running down, up, and really... You know, where our mind should be is on the small circulation. So, thinking of that pattern, uh, you can also, you know, if it helps you in this instance, you can reverse it because the circulation can go down the front, up the back, and it can also go down the back and up the front. I tend to always use, the, if you will, I refer to this as a forward rotation or a forward circulation. So, there's that. The mind's also on that connection point in the lower back. So you're thinking about that roundness circulating through the body throughout the play of the deer frolics while focusing specifically on that point that's below the Ming Men and above the glutes and on the hands when they take the antler position. So there's your movement, there's your chi circulation. Uh, we'll touch base on that as we start to do the movement itself. Now it's a basic animal frolic walk style, where we're going 45 to 45, which is why we wanted the mind in the knees, because my right foot's going to be around a 45. I'm going to turn to the left 45, so not straight forward, not to the wall to the side of me, but halfway in between each time, each, each point. So when I twist in that way, I want to make sure that I'm not pulling that knee with me, that the knee and the back toe, the back knee and the back toes are pointed in the same direction. I'm going to switch to the heel after a pause. There's a physical pause with the ball of the foot down, switch to the heel, fill the front foot, but keep the back foot grounded. Ball and step heel. There are times we step back flat footed and both feet are flat. There are times that we have gone you know, started it here, set the heel down, brought the back heel up, all sorts of different things. But here I'm switching to the heel. Sometimes we bring in the foot, and when there are actually uh, deer frolics where we bring in the foot as well. But here I'm keeping that back heel down. It creates a stretch in the torso that we want for the deer frolics. And then that foot releases and swings through to the next step at the next 45. Set the heel down, fill the foot. This is the exhalation. Pause physicality, movement, and breath, and inhale. Pause movement and breath, set the heel down. Exhale. I'm going to take two more steps. I'm going to lose my head. Inhale. The heel down after a pause. Sound of the wind. Nice gentle breeze. Actually, that's going to be my last step. And then just check and see 
if the new comment is, oh, okay. That must have been about my tongue on my roof of my mouth. Somebody, Rich actually, hi Rich, um, posted an LOL. <clears throat> so that little close that I did a little bit different than our casual closing and our Tai Chi walking exercise, which of course you bring that back foot in, hands up over the top of the ball. We still want the movement through the whole body in both of them, but that's our Tai Chi close. Our animal frolics close is, you know, we finish that last step, the hands stop doing whatever they were doing, sort of like poor chi through the Bach way. Palms up, back foot comes in, I turn into the direction I was walking, palms down, fingertip to fingertip, and I have my little rebound that pulls my hands in back, to, well, to the Dantian. So again, from that, you know, whatever the last step is, my hands release from what they're doing. You know, in this instance, my hands would be here. And so, I finish that last step. Turn in the direction, palms up, palms down. Now we'll rebound. One more time for that closing. Boom, hands are here. Go down, they relax. Bring the back foot in as the palms turn up, turn into the direction I'm walking. And that direction I'm walking thing is important because in our frolics, two things. It is a walk. It's a constant walk. A lot of people's versions of the animal frolics will include a step out and then they come back in and then a step out and they come back in, however it is they step, right? But it's just simply out and in, out and in as opposed to a pathway. And also, we're doing this today as a linear walk. Once you get comfortable with this particular approach to the animal frogs, it's supposed to be in a circle. So for instance, you know, in our townhouse, we have a nice round uh, dining room table. So a lot of times if I'm doing the frolics, I just walk around the dining room table, much to my cat's chagrin. Um, but that's, that's where I do it. We're not going to do a circle here. Um, and in the studio, when we've been in the studio, we're still, as I said, we're still remote uh, for the Water Tiger School studio classes. Uh, what we would do would mark, would be mark the circle with uh, little plush animals. I actually have all five animals and represented in one way. And for some reason, I have a lot more plush tigers than I have everything, than I have anything else. Um, not because I have purchased them. Thank you very much, those who have gifted me with plush tigers. Um, but anyway, uh, so there you are. Oh, and by the way, um, I want to go back to a moment for advanced and retreat because I made a couple of comments about, you know, the count, um, about feeling thirsty when I said, you know, repetition seven and seven, and also how nine and nine was a song cue. If you don't understand either of those, now would be a good time to go to my personal Laoshi Lawrence McElroy uh, Facebook page and like the page and maybe scroll through my posts from last week and you will learn why the number seven makes me thirsty and why the number nine is a song cue for me. Not that I'm trying to drum up business for my Facebook page. Not that I make any money off of it. It's just, you know, I like people to know that it's out there. It's a little bit different view of, of you know, me and Tai Chi and stuff as well, a little bit more personal than uh, the stuff that we post on the Water Tiger School page. So anyway, there we go, and there's my plug. Here is deer walking. So again, remember the antlers, all right? The fingers are sort of, you know, various configurations. Boom, as they come up. Not too far back not too far ahead, at about temple height. And don't think that the thumbs are connecting them to your head. Right? And that's the antlers. Uh, remember the chi focus. The small circulation, the inconception vessel down the front, the ungovernine vessel up the back. If you're coming in late and you want specifics on that, then you know go back earlier into the video after it's posted. Uh, and I detail the acupuncture points and that sort of thing. And also, on the YouTube channel, 
Um, there is in, I think it's Random Thoughts, I believe is the playlist, uh, there is a video, Most Referenced Acupuncture Points. Um, and we address you know, some of the, the issues with acupuncture points uh, in that particular YouTube video. Um, so anyway, so that, you want the mind on the, what we consider the connection point between the yin conception vessel and the yang governing vessel, which is above the top of the glutes and below where we place the Ming Men. Uh, and also on the hands when they are active in the antlers. Um, so anyway, let's shake stuff out. Remember the walk, boom, heel, back foot stays down in this one. That the physicality of the movement should feel like constant stretching with a supple, relaxed, natural torso. I think I got this right. And the breath in through the nose with a soft, breeze-like as opposed to wind-like exhalation. Shake things off. Remember, we consider all these details, the chi focus, the physicality, the, the nature of the deer, uh, calm and alert, um, and the spirit of the deer, supple, without limits, are all what are considered in this approach to the animal frolics as the Buddhist quality of the frolic. The uh, Taoist quality is becoming uh, becoming the animal. So <clears throat> it's a straight line, right? Eventually, uh, the circle walk. I think Steve. Hi, Steve. Um, just posted about looking forward to, to doing the animal frogs in a circle walk. Um, I just did a quick read. I didn't read the whole thing, so it might have said more than that. Well, I know it said more than that. But anyway, let the arms hang. When they're down, they're just relaxed. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me clarify that. They're just simply relaxed, so both the J word and the S word. There's no extra activation. Only when they're up do they really become the antlers. So start to get in touch with your inner deer, our plush animal, for the deer, by the way, his name is Duffy, a great plush animal, uh, oh, now I'm going to have to remember their name, um, hmm, it's gone, um, but it's a great plush animal online uh, company, hey, hang on a second, I bet I can find it, give me a moment, don't go away, Oh, I deleted it. StuffSafari.com. They're really, really good. They have, they have a great selection. Um, they're good people. They, they seem to be anyway. Good customer service. Let me put it that way. So, anyway. Duffy the deer. So, three, two, one. Inhalation in through the nose. Ball of the foot. Antlers. Feel that stretch. Circulation, heel down. Now this is my favorite moment in the deer frogs. So the arms are dangling because the back heel is down. You're moving forward. Really feel the opening up of the chest, the shoulders, the back. A little compression in the back, in the lower back, but an opening of the upper back. I feel very much like you know the regalness of a big buck deer. The chest is out, that sort of thing. Inhale. Pause the moment. Breath and movement, set the heel down. Remember, unlike our Tai Chi and most of our Qigong, both movement and breath, pause. Inhale, the inhalation, the hands up, the placement of the foot should all take the same amount of time. Switching to the heel, the exhalation, the hands down, and the filling of that front foot should all end at the same time. I should no extra breath, no extra movement. As the breath is over, the movement is over. Which is why the foot floats out and doesn't crashes out. Doesn't crash out. However, keep in mind, 
some that might have sort of a little advanced balance issue, you slide the foot, finding a surface and footwear that allow for that. Oops, switch to the heel. I know I'm losing my head. Just figuratively, really, not literally. Oh. Make this the last step this round. Now you can't see my hands, but there are my antlers. So I fill that foot, bring in the back foot, hands up. I know you can't see them. Fingertip to fingertip, palms down. I'm sinking here so I can rebound up and bring the hands to the Shia Dante and acupuncture. There's a pass with the deer frogs in a linear fashion, with the deer walking, the first of the five. You have deer walking, deer running, uh, deer looking back, deer jumping, and deer kicking. And I'll do a brief uh, <clears throat> demo of those. After this one more pass, I mean, where, where are we at time-wise? Just looking, yeah. Getting up there. So one more quick pass, last talk, last pause, a little consistency in the movement. Um, so remember, knees and toes, chi circulation, the yin conception vessel, the yin governing vessel, whichever way works best for you, but just sort of the idea of that orbit, of that yin conception vessel in the front, yin governing vessel in back, their connection point for us in the lower back, below the Ming men, but above the cheeks. Um, and the hands. Movement should always feel like it's always a constant stretch where whatever position you're in, there is a stretch to it with a supple, natural, um, relaxed torso that you're keeping in mind, the calm alertness of the deer, as well as its supple, uh, suppleness without limitation. So I like to think, you know, the deer it's like a little bubbling brook getting a drink. And it hears something. And it simply looks. It's not frightened. It just heard something, so it's looking. Pausing both movement and breath. There was the exhalation. Back heel down. Feel that stretch. Feel that openness in the front. Compression in the lower back, which actually helps to drive the focus to that connection point between the yin conception vessel and the yin governing vessel. What did I say about not talking? You may have to play with that placement of the front foot. You may have to be closer. For those with less range of motion in the hips, in the quad, and the legs themselves, I can get a fairly, you know, open position here, and I'm still comfortable. Three more steps. Actually, I lied. Just one more. And in that back foot, palms up, fingertip to fingertip, palms down, and a little rebound. So again, in full view of camera, that last step from here down, back foot comes in, palms up, just like poor chi through the Bach way, palms down, fingertip to fingertip, down that center line. I'm compressing everything so the rebound can be upward to pull the hands into the belly, and that's the closing. And what I was talking about with the foot is, is getting an angle where my feet can see. I, I have a fairly good reach. My feet are fairly separated here, and I'm comfortable with that. But what you might want to do is have that forward leg a little bit closer. which is also what you can do to adjust your stride 
when you're walking in the circle, because part of the circle walk is to maintain the same distance between you and the people in front of you and behind you. So depending upon how the circle's going, you may have to extend your step to make up for lost ground, or you may have to move that foot in closer so you can create some space either between you and the person in front of you or make up space between you and the person behind you, whatever, as you're doing the circle walk. Because again, normally, This is done in a circle instead of the linear fashion. So that was deer walking. And as we keep doing these alone together, we might start seeing other aspects of the separate uh, of the different animal frolics. So we focus basically this round with just the first one, the walking in each. So we've done crane walking. I think we did crane flying too, by the way. Um, we did monkey walking, we've done tiger walking, we've done bear walking, and now we've done deer walking. So we might come back for some of the others. Deer running is on that inhalation, you're in this position. So the hands draw up the center line and out driving with the fingertips. And then on the exhalation, you bring the back foot in. Deer looking back, same movement, you add an exhalation, you add an inhalation, you add an exhalation. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Deer jumping, you reverse the breath, same movement to begin with, in and out, but it's an exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation. Deer kicking is, to use the name of another animal, a bear. Because you draw up and chamber that leg, inhale, I am still inhaling, I am still inhaling. And I am falling over. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale. Exhale, exhale, and see if I can get a good one here. Inhale, 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 exhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, inhale. By the way, hold. Exhale, 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 and hold. So again, those last few, um, deer running, deer looking back, deer jumping, deer kicking, just a demonstration of the remainder of the deer frolics. So there you go, folks. A um, little of the deer frolics, deer walking from the version that we use. Um, of the animal frogs, and there are different versions out there. Um, yeah, the thing uh, that Steve had posted in Walking the Circle wasn't that he was looking forward to doing it. It was seems like following uh, Singyi. Am I pronouncing that right? Uh, I think so. It's close anyway. Uh, principles, yes or no? And eh, sort of. Um, I mean, we are we are walking a circle, and it is part of that particular art as well as it's part of Bakwa. Um, but they're, you know, they're sort of related, but not directly. Um, it's like probably third cousins, I would guess, is it, it might be a good way to, to, um, compare the two. So, okay. So yes. <laughs> oh, that was, that was about the pronunciation, wasn't it? So I did get that right. Huh. And my Chinese is awful. Uh, so Colette, you're welcome. Um, Steve, I hope that made sense uh, about following the principles of Xing Yi, um, and I hope you enjoyed uh, our time with the deer. Um, we'll be here next week, and again, if you weren't here at the very beginning, um, and you don't want to go back to the very beginning, just a heads up, we are here next week live, um, going dark, and it'll actually be dark from um, Saturday the 15th through Sunday, the not Saturday, not Sunday, through Saturday the 22nd, just taking time off 
been going, 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 going ever since we went into high home isolation. And I just need to take a dark week. And that's what we're doing. Even the studio's down for a week. Um, so there is that. We'll be back then. Uh, let's see. So this week is the 3rd. We'll be here the 10th. We won't be here the 17th. We'll be back the 24th. Uh, and we'll also be dark whenever Labor Day is which I might be that first Saturday, that first Monday in September. Um, so anyway, next week, um, something may be completely different. Uh, we are still uploading old version, old, you know, the original um, starting weeks of the live sessions weekly on our YouTube channel. That's our, our weekly upload. And occasionally we're doing uh, original content, just not as often. And there might be something original by the end of this week up on our YouTube channel. Um, not sure at this point, because some things have changed in, in my personal schedule. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it for Water Tiger this week, so we'll see. Um, so anyway, so there's that. Please, 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 please wear your damn mask. Wash your hands. Stay at home whenever it is possible. Um, and we, we got to flatten this curve everywhere. Or um, this ain't going to go away. It, well, it ain't going to go away. But we have to learn to live with it. And we're not really doing that at this time. I'm not on a soapbox. I'm on a 12-pound um, um, medicine ball. Uh, but I will jump off my theoretical soapbox now and say, stay safe, everybody. And we will catch you next time. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you find it fascinating, Steve. It's first experience with animal frogs. I'm sure you're not alone in that. Um, even, you know, even people who have been with Water Tiger for a while in the public classes have never done any of the animal frolics before. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to thread it in. It's pretty cool. And a lot of times, Boucher, a lot of times uh, I have, you know, like when I presented just FYI, since, you know, this triggered something and I have trouble shutting up. Uh, when I've done animal frolics as my part, when we have had uh, World Tai Chi Day and, and I focused on the animal frolics, inevitably somebody in the group, even longtime players of Tai Chi will come over at some point and go, what, what, what style of Tai Chi is that? I, I'm not familiar with that. Ain't Tai Chi, folks, right? That's one of the things, you know, you want to keep in mind, you know, when are we doing things that are Tai Chi and when aren't we? Like the nine temple exercises I mentioned in the beginning isn't Tai Chi, but it's often affiliated with Tai Chi. The animal frolics are Qigong, though, again, a lot of people who do Tai Chi do it. And the hand exercises that we do, the grabbing air hand exercises, aren't Tai Chi. They, they are uh, Chin Na, season control. But yes, we do them in our Tai Chi class. So it's just important to sort of, you know, keep track of that stuff. So when somebody asks you what, you do, what you're doing, you don't say, oh, I'm doing my Tai Chi exercises. No, you're doing exercises that you do in your Tai Chi class, but you're doing Shaolin Chin Ah. So, all righty, that is enough for me. I am shutting up and going away. And yes, Steve, endless study, forever the student, always the beginner, never stopping never considering oneself done, except I'm done with the Facebook Live session. How is that for a transition?